spectrum of the instrument itself. Um, it's been wittily called the gloom tube, but it is actually capable of having ecstatic moments as well as gloomy moments, and uh, many other possibilities in between. Um, and it's really only in the last, say, 40 or 50 years that it's come into its own in terms of a solo instrument. And, uh, up to about 15 years ago, there was hardly any music written for it by Irish composers, so I sort of set out on a bit of a crusade and commissioned a load of new pieces. And there's a lot of pieces now. What's really gratifying for me is I have my students now playing these works and taking, getting a whole new take on the music. For me, that's very important when it comes to new music. That new music continues to be new, despite the fact a piece might have been written 20 years ago. If somebody else takes it up or is playing in a different acoustic space, the piece becomes, another, it becomes new. The music has its own... Um, has its own way of expressing itself beyond any sort of individual. Putting the, the, the little pieces of improvisations into uh, a, a semblance of an order, and when it was a work in progress at that point, the clarinet part was done. I had decided there's going to be no more part to the clarinet, and I was thinking at the time that the electronics would be optional, so that it would be a clarinet solo with optional electronics. And I was developing the electronics when I brought it in as a work in progress. And then when that was done, I realized that it wasn't that, that the electronics, it was a duo. It was a duo with them, because the, the materials are being generated live, they're not going to be the same every time, and they're responsive to the player, so um, in a lot of ways the little decisions the player might make in interpreting the material becomes bigger things as the computer records it, processes it, and puts it back out again. process was me kind of sending lays, kind of instructions, and then kind of little bits of scores, but I don't really use scores that much. Um, so it was it was just to kind of uh, get her to kind of almost rehearse and create at the same time, because most of the rehearsal stuff is the stuff that you hear on electronics. So it was basically a one-page document, really, of what this is what the piece is, and it'd be great if, because uh, at that point, we hadn't had, we didn't have the PC actually. Like it, it was the, it was planned and the idea was there. So we, I I wrote back and I was like, well, what kind of, you know, what do you want to do with this? And you, you I think you suggested like send maybe three samples of each, each yeah. of each syllable. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's you know that's not very much. So I, I can't remember how many files I sent you. It's probably like far too many. Oh, um, but I just kind of spent about like half an hour, you know, not a huge amount of time, 
But if you can imagine how many different sounds you can make in half an hour. The original version of the piece was uh, conceived where, with a bit of wearable technology that she and I developed together that would fit on, on her first finger. There's a sensor you can get that um, picks up the bend of your fingernail just enough to, for um, an Arduino to pick it up. So I developed a glove with her, miniaturising it to fit her. So for the tour that we did to premiere it and the recording on the CD, she's using the glove to control the electronic element. Um, so there was a, a large amount of collaboration to actually create that, um, that piece of technology.